two of the U.S. Challenge. It's not good. My God. Although it's a close game, the challenge has just begun. This is a tale of two teams facing off in two opposite worlds, where the heat of the sun in Florida meets the icy embrace of winter in Maine. Join us as we embark on a journey that unfolds the remarkable contrast between the southernmost state on the east coast and the northernmost gem that graces our eastern shores. Florida, the southernmost haven, boasts the enchanting beauty of the Everglades and the white sandy beaches of Miami, where nature's glory coexists with the energy of urban life. Meanwhile, in the frosty north, Maine's wilderness echoes with the silent majesty of snow-covered landscapes and the mystery of what's hiding in the frozen waters below. Each climate brings its unique set of challenges and rewards, testing the skills and resilience of our competing animals. It's a battle of climates, where every species and inch of fish counts. Stay tuned to see who will reel in the victory. Come on back, come on back. No. Oh, he's coming back, he's coming back, he's coming back. He does not like it. He's pissed off, he's pissed off. Oh, he's shying away. Shoot. Oh, he's coming back, he's coming back, he's coming back, he's coming back. Got him. Had a little perch. Perch! It's not gonna help us, but it is a fish. We struggled to find where they're at. I, you know, I fish this place in the open water quite a bit, but I have not ice fished here in a long time, so we're trying to find the grass. We're not gonna spend too much time on this guy. Send him right back. Get him in the water. There's bigger ones down. There's huge perch in this lake and big bass. But ice fishing is is it's a game about moving around and knowing exactly where you're gonna be at because you're limited with your space. Like whereas the boys down south are able to cast and cover water where whereas we are fishing literally a 10-inch diameter hole, and that is our fishing space. Yeah, this is it. This is That's it. That's it. No, so this is it. That's oh, where we're gonna be, Ralph. Right? Whoa, yeah. Out there on the rocks, on that jetty. Yeah, I see a few poles hanging out. Dude, this is where we probably should have been all along. Let's be honest. There's got to be everything in the world swimming in this thing. There's a jetty that goes out. There's this inlet. A lot of current in the inlet. And uh, I think we're gonna soak some baits, throw some lures, see what we can put together down here. Yeah. Just met a gentleman over here, Kirk. He's uh, he's giving us some intel. There's literally a barracuda Dude, right here swimming around. That is a big fish. one. And uh, he's putting his food on to see if he can catch it right now. We're gonna try some, maybe some lures. Yeah. And then he also said that there's uh, mangrove snappers down here that we can possibly catch on some shrimp and stuff like that. He showed us a weed line. Yep. And just sitting there for 30 seconds looking at the water, I saw multiple fish swimming around. Yeah. Just cruising the bottom. Oh, yeah. And uh, the tide is changing right now. So we gotta, this is, this is a good time. This is the time. Fish. Yep. So yep. let's get some rigs going. Yeah. Let's We're go. round fish, boys. We're round fish. Oh, there's a good one. Yeah, good one. There we go. Oh, big perch, giant perch, giant perch. It's gotten really cold and the snow's starting to come down. This is that blizzard that they were forecasting, but finally got the right size perch we're after. I think this is a quality perch, something that we could definitely say is gonna be the biggest. We're probably gonna catch at this lake at least. Might go 12 inches. Quality little fish came out of nowhere, nine feet of water. People have that huge misconception that you have to go in the deepest part of the lake when you're fishing in this cold weather, but these perch, they thrive. And the bass do too. It's very surprising to watch how agile and quickly bass move under the ice, even in just 10 to 15 feet. We need a measurement on this guy, and we're also gonna keep him to uh, batter up in some of our Guggen fish fry. 12 and a half inches. That's a very respectable main perch, no doubt. And He's coming home with us. It's gonna be dinner for tonight. We just need a couple more for a full feast, but at least we get the taste. Nice fish, though. Oh, is that your kid? Yeah. 
Dude, that's a good one, man. Yeah, that's normal size over there. For peacocks? Yeah, yeah. that's normal size. I'd love, we'd love yeah. to have one of those. You yeah. Throw like a what? Like a spinner bait, yeah. a jerk bait, yeah. any kind of bass. Anything they, they they go after. Well, we have not caught a fish in eight hours in Florida. It's no. okay though. It's fine. It's not, that's this right. is just an opportunity. That's all. That's all this is. It's an opportunity to overcome something, and that's a blessing. You know what's a blessing too? What? Captain Kirk just gave us a bunch of info. Now, That's if we true. Go, if we go in this next hole and it's juice, we're calling Captain Kirk again. We're gonna be like, dude, where's the where's the next beach hole? What's next? What yeah. would you do? Yeah, this year for 20 years. That's a good point. Hey, look, we tried our spots. We need to give Captain Kirk a chance now. It's time for his spots to be tried here. You know what I mean? Captain, we're going we're going to your your hole. Ice fishing's a blast. Loving it. Loving it. It's snowing pretty good. I will say we've drilled at least 40 holes. 40? Maybe 30. Way more than We that. drilled more than 40 holes. Okay, so maybe we drilled 40 plus holes. I bet you the boys are down in Florida right now drinking Mai Tais, pina coladas, wearing shorts, sweating. The best part of it is the guy's holding the camera. He got drawn on the really short straw. It's cold. They could have been in Florida. <laughs> Yeah, that's a little bass. That's what that is. There's a bass on a bed right here. This is the sign that we've been looking for. First stop here. I just caught a bass off a of bed in January. This is what we've been looking for. I'm sure they will get bigger than this, but there's peacocks in here. There's bass on beds. Yeah, buddy. It's about the same size as this morning. Probably. Is that going to go more than nine? You know, it's a, it's a 10, bud. Oh, upgrade. it's almost 11. We'll call it 10. Dude, nice upgrade, bro. Let's go. One inch. Hey, hey our boy Kirk. Yeah. Captain Kirk. He knew what he was talking about. Hey, that bass was on a bed. Yeah, that's great news. We haven't even taken like three steps along this bank. So it's go time. Yeah, it's go time. Peacocks. Uh, he said there's snook in here as well. It's freaking dope. We just spent four hours chasing dinky perch. I don't want to say dinky. We did catch a 12 and a half inch. That's actually a really quality main perch. Uh, but we spent four hours chasing perch, and now we are faced with another debacle. How to get back out of this? Uh, we have fresh snow, and we've got a trailer that has to be reversed uphill. And as you guys saw this morning, this thing is not good in the snow. Therefore, we are probably. I, I imagine we'll be here for an hour trying to get this thing out literally an hour so you guys didn't click on this video to watch us catch fish because you know that we can't do that you guys definitely are watching right now just for this aspect of just the absolute and ultimate here goes nothing there's a fish right here i don't even know what kind of fish it is some sort of aquarium looking fish Oh no, I lost him. I had this fish and I was I literally slinging him onto the bank and he, he was heavier than I thought and he just hit the wall and he fell off. But he smoked this little uh, tasty tube. I think he was on a bed. Just had that in there on a little jig head and he Dunk. took off with it. And they're in these little grass holes. I've never caught one of these things before. Pretty crazy. Spin, spin, spin. Spin, spin. spin they're all fire. Yeah. 
Alright, you want to play one? I don't know, wait one though. Let's think this one through. Dude, look at this. Look at this. Dude, look at that. That's insane. That's actually insane. I need to get a little bit of momentum and just bring it straight back. I need one of you guys to be back be back there and just make sure I'm not like crazy with the trailer. I'm not gonna hit anything. Got him. Let's go, boys. Do we have some inches? That's something I don't even know Do we about. We have some inches here. What is this thing, dude? That is dinner. That's dinner. That That's about eight inches. What right? a beautiful little fish right here. I. Uh, I missed one of these, or I had one on that was bigger on the Tasty Tube, and I just thought, if I get a little tinier jig head with some shrimp, I'm sure to get one, and I did. So, it's about the size of a big bluegill. That say. looks like it might be a Mayan cichlid. A Mayan cichlid. Perhaps. Straight from the Mayan community. I think, I don't quote me on that, but it's it's looking like that. This it's is looking a, like that. There's a lot edible? of different, I don't know, I'm also is looking at it. Good Lord above that he's about to let us get up this hill with a two-wheel drive van. It's like 100% just thick layer of ice underneath the snow. Oh, I got a whole lot going on. I uh, got a two-wheel drive van just stuck right before the road. And I'm trying to go up a hill, so it's... I just need to get out of the snow, I guess. Can you eat a Mayan cichlid? Let's go Let's go there first. Googling, can you eat a Mayan cichlid? The edibility of a Mayan cichlid is classified as good. Okay. It's white, flaky meat with mild flavor, no bag or size limit. So I'm guessing they're invasive as well. So we let's got go supper in. and we got eight inches. Let's Dear Lord, let's not lose them. Down. Supper in. and we got eight inches. That's Dear Lord, let's not lose oh him. Now he's, he's trying to get out he's of here. Going. Wow. Do you, you want me to run him back to the camper and toss him in the old fridge? Stick him in the yeah. Stick, Stick him in the old ice box. And then, uh, Dude, good freaking job, man. Our morale was in the dumps. I didn't get these gentlemen's name, but they're really chill. They're awesome and they're gonna get us out of this ditch because if not, we would be stuck here overnight. Which to be honest, probably like the best vehicle to be stuck in overnight in the snow in a blizzard but I'd like to get out of here we got other places to fish and this lake was not good how are we looking I feel pretty good about it now I, I, it's still kind of crazy how dark it is and how early it is <laughs> we have like no advantage in this challenge whatsoever and the snow is picked up as you can does it look like it's picked up a little bit Too. I feel like a wet dog. You yeah. got caught in a storm. Just, just imagine being wet and it's like 10 degrees. I think I'd rather not imagine that. So when you put it, we had a tough day. But when but you compare, we've had a great day. Yeah. Yeah, we weren't freezing at any point in time. We didn't have to deal with the icy conditions and the probably terrible fishing that they're dealing with, and they are also not spending the night uh, stuck, stranded, and freezing. So, no complaints. Shout out to Silvis Towing for getting us out of that mess. Uh, dude, this is I know, dude. Is it like frosted right now? Yeah. Does it look like a frosted mini weed above, is above my lip? <laughs> What's crazy is we got stuck literally, I mean, 0.5 miles away from Silvis Towing. Uh, and they got us out, so shout out to them, and uh, we're good. We're good. 
the, the snow was not supposed to be picking up. Like we should probably get out of here, yeah, though. Because like, it's, 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 it, as we're talking, more snow is accumulating. We've got to walk back and get the sleds. Oh, also, too, that tow was $100. So that that uh, <laughs> that also is going to get out of our budget. You laugh, but, dude, $100 is not that bad for a tow. Honestly, not that bad. He was 40 minutes away, too. So, oh, yeah. I mean, it's great. I spent, what, what did we spend today? $190 to catch three perch? Mm, let's go. Okay, let's uh, get the sleds and see if we can get out of here. We still have quite, oh, we have another uphill little battle there. Okay. This That's is what fun. I was worried about. I yeah. thought there was well, multiple. Gonna... Right. We're at Walmart, folks. We got camp set up. We were just trying to decide if we're gonna go with the original Guggen Fish Fry or the spicy. And I think me and you have determined the spicy is the route we're gonna go. I mean, it's a Mayan cichlid. You gotta make it spicy. Yeah, it's exotic. Exactly. So, uh, we're just going to be pan, um, you know, pan fry, shallow pan fry, little oil, butter mix, and uh, this is it's not going to be very much to go around. So I'm thinking we probably need a cold brewski. This is available right now, guys. There's nothing better than a cold fish. You know, I like wintry fish. They're nice, just delicious meat, flaky. Hot fish like this, not as good, but this will make it better. Available now. Google Available squad. now. GoogleSquad.com. At GoogleSquad.com. So this is your first time cleaning one of these bad boys, I'm guessing. Uh, 100%. But I, <laughs> I have cleaned fish of similar size. You know, this would be, you know, like a big bluegill, a small crappie. Let's see what we can do here on these. Uh, try to get the most meat possible on this guy. Got stuck again on the next freaking hill. We're like double screwed right now. A little bit of northern physics for you guys here. Snow, powdery snow, the worst to grab traction on. Second to that is ice. We have both factors right now. So we have powder snow under glare ice. And every time we kick up the snow, which inevitably we do because this thing's got terrible traction control and front wheel drive, like we said a hundred times, um, clears that ice away and then we're faced with, or sorry, clears the snow away and then we're faced with the ice. I think I'm just going to reverse and just try it again. Or just call, do you want to just call those guys? I mean, you could try, I mean, reverse, yeah, go ahead and give it a shot, but my God, this is, a, this has turned into a, I've been, I've been in some, this is just. Golden Krispies, where we're at. Get a little shake up here. When do you put your oil in? Butter. Lovely. Oh, Shrinking up already. Listen to that. Crackle. Okay. No, not same spot. No, not same spot. Just like probably another hundred yards from where you dropped us off at. It's just there's ice under the, the snow, so every time we kick up the snow, it's just glare ice. So um, we'll right we'll compensate you all to help us out if you're free. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm right Okay, thank you. Oh, these guys. This is like a f con artist. These guys are just like, yeah, we live on this road. This road's. <laughs> these guys have probably the best business ever because this is undoubtedly one of the worst roads. Uh, in this general area of Maine because apparently they don't they don't salt it normally you don't have the problem of of ice being underneath the snow but for whatever reason it's dirt mud on top of ice hasn't been salted all season otherwise you wouldn't have ice like this and then you got the snow so he's on his way right now he uh he wanted me to let you know that I'm a idiot <laughs> did he say that no, no <laughs> but I'm sure he was thinking it oh, oh. I did it. like that 10 extra points this puts us at uh so 29 points wow well that uh, made a big difference my friend i'm so glad you caught that fish oh, steaming look at that flaky white meat steaming perfect i did a great job well you know let's we'll see about that that's fire it's clean oh my god the seasoning spice it's actually yeah, spicy actually get the spice No b****. 
that's like that seasoning is awesome. Dude, out of my ham. The seasoning's awesome, and that fish is awesome. <laughs> Mayan cichlid, dude. You're not eating cichlids. Wow. I'd say it tastes better than crappy. Of course, I'm not a huge crappy guy like you are. Dude, it's like that. Um, it's like a bluegill, but they're bigger. You taste that mm. spicy seasoning. That is really good. I, I wish we had more. Like if we had a whole plate of this, yeah. I would just pound it and say, forget the bratwurst, save this for tomorrow. So la I looked at the clock. We got officially stuck at 4 p.m. It's now been two and a half hours and we're eating our second toe. <laughs> <laughs> second toe. I'm just here to hang out, I guess. I'm also you know what's kind of funny is I, I dug us out, well actually John and I dug us out earlier and then it snowed like four inches or so on top of what we just dug out and we hung out. So. I'm really glad I got the experience. Quality time. Quality time with John B. inside of Maine. By the way, we had some of the best, or I had some of the best, clam chowder last night, which I've been thinking about. I wish we weren't so far from that, because I would really love yeah, to have some clam chowder. <laughs> So we're back in Walmart. Uh, we're gonna get a few of like lunch items to keep us rolling. We're gonna need some more fishing gear, potentially a towel to dry ourselves off after a shower. We're gonna need a few miscellaneous things, hence the Walmart camping spot that we chose out for. All right, we got our surf rod picked out. We need to find a reel that's big enough to have the line capacity to really make this work. But we're looking pretty good here though. I think we're gonna be within budget because it's only a $30 Ozark Trail rod. All right guys, we got 170 bucks right there. So that gives us about $330 left of our initial budget. We still have another day and a half. So I think we're doing just fine. So let's head back to the camper, get supper going for tonight. Yes, sir. With bratwurst and some sticky snacks. Mike, I see a couple issues here. Word for one. I don't see any. I don't see any. There we go. I don't see any issues. I don't see any issues. All I see. John B, come on, buddy, get it, 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 get it. Van driver. Come on, John. Come on, John. Come on, John. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. We made it. There's also a guy plowing the road right here, or plowing the parking lot. This is. I love this place. I'm so excited to be in Maine. I love it. Look at this guy. I know. I heard really good. Well, after our quick supermarket stop. Total up the math between the wrecker expenses, the gas station stop this morning where Jerry spent $80 on jerky and uh, energy <laughs> drinks, and now burgers. We have $498 left to spend. All we have to do is not get stuck again. I think we, we'll, we'll be we fine budget-wise. We solid nights of just good dinners. We're gonna have to make a really good dinner. This tonight. is fine, yeah, burgers is good. But oh, we, we have to make that perch tour. Yeah, we have, the, we have a perch tour. We're about to get an extra point, 10 points for cooking up that perch. Do you have a, do you have oil? Yeah, I packed it, it's in here. Five minutes to get to my cabin. Um, hopefully we can make it there. I mean, I've got the record on speed dial at this point. Let's head back to uh, a safe place to camp tonight and uh, call it a freaking day. I'm so done. That's a delicious bratwurst. That's yeah, really good, actually. Even better with a cold beer. And the best part is uh, we're in t-shirts and enjoying ourselves in our camper van in Walmart, here in the Walmart parking lot, and not having to tow ourselves out of a snow situation. They might still be stuck right now. We really don't even know. They got oh stuck for gosh. a third time, like after we got off the phone with them the last time. Like I almost feel bad for them. We just got back to my cabin here at Camp Claw and uh, we got stuck on the turn in. Forecast called for six inches of snow. Actually, it called for three. We got six inches, then we got eight inches, then we got 12 inches. So now I'm going to try to attempt to use some Toyota power to get the Winnebago out of the ditch. Wish us luck. Actually, I kind of do. I kind of do feel bad for him. Nothing a little bratwurst can't fix. Yeah, we, so we had our fish, and then we've, we're eating our bratwurst. We're game planning for tomorrow. Um, not really sure what they're thinking about for tomorrow. They're probably thinking about like, how do we survive the night? 
How do we actually survive the night? They're probably booking flights home to By the way, not proper technique to be wrapped over this around your hinge, but we're just gonna send her. I came to Maine to have a good time. My God. I feel like I'm training for elk season right now. It's crazy. We're excited for tomorrow. I think uh, we got a good idea, good plan. We got tackle from Walmart this evening. Um, we got a game plan. We're gonna go to like some daggum intercoastal yeah. stuff. Could be some big fish hooked tomorrow. And some shallow fish. Deep. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna try it all. So you guys stay tuned. Maybe we'll catch a big old shark and. Uh, Hope those boys are surviving the night. Well, cheers, boys. Seven times, six times. Did I did I do this? I mean, I mean, I guess I definitely did it. But like, how? There was so much snow here. I don't know. I feel partially responsible, but yeah, this is a lot of snow. They called for like three to six inches. We have like 12 inches of snow right now. And we tried doing two vehicles at once and it didn't work. Um, I might have to call one of my neighbors tomorrow. Hi, buddy. Paul to help us get us out uh, because it's just it's just not it's not happening. So luckily this thing does run on propane, so we're gonna let it run on propane, and uh, tomorrow we're gonna worry about getting it out of this ditch, which is by the way my backyard. So. Oh, Rob vs Gold Challenge! Yay! Yay! Vote for Team Rob and John. <laughs> <laughs>